Alrighty, today we're looking at a fantastic PlayStation 1 role-playing game, Thousand Arms. In this game, you play as Mice Triumph, who is a spirit blacksmith, and uh, after a series of events where his hometown gets attacked by the Dark Acolytes, he meets up with this girl, Sudina, and eventually they have to go on a quest to light all the holy flames in the world, or protect them, actually. Story-wise, this game is nothing special, but it does have a nice cast of characters, and the dating sim mechanic really sets this game apart from others. So by dating the various female characters that you meet in the game, you increase their spiritual bond with you, and that enables you to increase your weapon strength and also learn new spells and special attacks. There are no weapons to buy in stores or find anywhere. This is the only way to upgrade. And the dating sim elements are just funny as hell sometimes. Like, some of the answers are just really goofy. Um, it's fun to kind of mess with the ladies sometimes and see their, their reactions to what you say. And uh, overall, it's just really, really fun. Now the battle system in this game, it's it's okay. Uh, it's your turn-based system, but there is a twist to it. Uh, the combat is basically one-on-one. -on -one. You have a frontline character who attacks the frontline character of the enemy. You can have two support characters in the back, but they cannot directly attack the enemy. The only way for them to attack is either for you to select the next character command, which removes your frontline character from the battle altogether and you cannot be summoned back, or to let that frontline character get killed and your your uh, you know support characters go into the front and then you can revive that character later. Um, overall, I really didn't care for the system too much. It's not terrible, but at the same time it's not great. Uh, one thing about it though is it has some amazing hand-drawn artwork for all the sprites and the enemy designs are really funny, uh, really original, and uh, highly enjoyable. Now as far as sound goes in this game, it does have a very solid soundtrack. It's not really too memorable, but it is pleasant to listen to while you're playing. Um, another thing with the sound department is they recorded 12 hours of voice acting for this game. And voice acting for the most part is pretty good, especially for a PlayStation 1 RPG. Um, you know, there are some kind of, you know, cringeworthy elements here and there, but overall it was very well done. One major complaint I did have with this game was the camera. When you're in towns, there's no way to lock the camera in place, and sometimes you'll find it just swinging around wildly while you're trying to explore, and while you can use the shoulder buttons to send it right and left, it would have been nice to have been able to lock that into place and not have to deal with that all the time. As far as dungeons go, um, the camera is in a fixed position and it gives you a good view of the action. Um, dungeons can be really confusing though sometimes, especially one of the later ones. Uh, there was this maze where everything looked the same and you step on these tiles and like it would turn the room around and you get all confused and lost. Um, yeah, other than that part of the dungeon, the rest of the dungeons were really well done. I enjoyed them quite a bit. And graphics in this game, in towns, dungeons, and the world map, it's all polygons. Your characters are all 2D sprites though. Uh, looks really nice. Another issue I do have with the game is that it's way too easy. I only saw the game over screen twice, and some of the later boss battles were done in like 4 or 5 turns. It may seem like I've complained a lot during this review, but this was actually a really fun RPG. If you're a fan of games like Grandia and Lunar, I highly recommend you check this out.